The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Why do they do it? Relinquish a life of reason and relative quiet for anxious days and inevitable discovery and death. Who are they? The spies, the undercover agents, the counter spies, the double agents, all those who deal in espionage. Today, an account drawn from the life of the most controversial spy of her time, Mata Hari, and an attempt to unseal the mystery of a woman considered too dangerous to live. What is this work you offer me? Espionage. What? To be a spy. Me? A spy? Madam Mother Harry, I believe you are the ideal person to spy for Germany. But I know nothing about it. It doesn't matter. We can teach you. mystery drama, Mata Hari, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by G. Frederick Lewis and stars Tammy Grimes. I shall return shortly with Act One. <laughs> Gathering intelligence has been an essential occupation for thousands of years. What, in essence, is the other country up to? 1300 B.C., the Hittites sent spies to check out the intentions of Tutankhamun's widow. Their instructions? Bring me back reliable information, ordered the Hittite prince. Espionage is not a game for amateurs, yet there are many who do it for love or money. Among them, the beautiful dancer Mata Hari, who discovered spying far more dangerous than glamorous. doing in my dressing room? Waiting for you, my flower. What kind of a manager are you? You're supposed to be out front, putting a stop to this nonsense. I was never so insulted. I don't know what you're talking about, my dear. You are the sensation of Berlin, and there's no nonsense about that. You are a fool, Gabriel. Don't you hear what that idiot Stempfel is doing with his orchestra? I finish a serious Javanese dance. Exotic, lovely, Tender movements, and after my last curtain call, he has the orchestra play Tarara Bondier. As if I were some vulgar can can dancer from the Moulin Rouge. I'm leaving Berlin tonight. My dear child, they don't know what to make of Matahari. It's because your dancing is so unusual. Because you've just come from a sensational engagement in Paris. That's why they play the French can-can. No one in his right mind would want to insult the unique Matahari. You think so? You really think so? Oh, I send in your dress, Louisa. You get into your street clothes. And we've got to have some coffee at the Zacher. And chocolate cake? No, oh, no, no. No chocolate cake. Re as little as you do, every pound is noticeable. Oh, go see who that is and send it, Louisa. I'm so tired. Yes, Victor, I'm Hans Van Yago, chief Berlin police. Oh, you've come to arrest Madame Matahari or compliment her? Certainly not to arrest her. It is the chief of Berlin police to see you, darling. Is he in uniform? But of course. Have him wait and tell Louisa I'll call her when I want her. Please, Herr Von Yago. Madame will be out presently. I will wait for you outside, darling. Herr Von Yago, this is indeed a pleasure. Please sit down. I hope I am not interrupting you. Not at all. I was about to get out of my costume, but since I have a visitor, I shall rest here on my chaise. Would you pour me a little drink from the bottle and do help you, sir? You may sit on the edge of my chaise if you wish. I think your uniform is splendid. I've always liked men in uniforms. Thank you. 
Monsieur Prozet. Delicious. Mr. Bart? You speak German very well. And French and English and Dutch and Javanese. How nice of Berlin's chief to come see me backstage. My pleasure. And I brought you these roses. My compliments. Roses. My favorite flower. <laughs> I cannot get enough of them. Roses. In December. I think, Heaven Yago, you deserve a little private temple dance as a reward. I keep this phonograph with me always. And when I am sad, I play the music of my people. Why should the beautiful Matahari ever be sad? My life is lonely. And I am used to the finer things which the little money I have cannot buy. I should have thought your extraordinary dancers would be very well paid. In the ordinary sense, yes. For ordinary persons. But for Matahari, who must ride in her own carriage, my diet can only be the finest of food. Jewels. Fair. Mother Harry is not asking too much. We will not talk of money or finding some benefactor truly appreciative of the arts. I shall dance. I wind up the phonograph. I place the needle on the record. So. Then I pick up my finger bell. So. Four on this hand. And we lose ourselves in the music on the floor. Evaniago, did you really come to see me only as an admirer? I confess there have been complaints. Complaints? <laughs> no. But my program is short, perhaps. That I dance too little? That you, uh, wear too little. In Paris, I wore far less. Unfortunately, Berlin is not Paris. People here are not accustomed to such a wild spirit as yours. Thank you. And what do you think, my dear Berliner Chief of Police? And I wear to you do? Not at all. You give so much, madame. It is perfect. Madame, I would be greatly honored if you would allow me to take you to a little supper tonight. We could drink and dance. A simple supper. What a beautiful idea. at the Berlin Cafe. Walter Nikolai, what a surprise. I thought your intelligence people worked around the clock. Uh, when you look at those couples dancing, you wouldn't think Germany has just declared war. We have. Germany and France and England, no one told me. Uh, an hour ago. Uh, Hans, I imagine you are not alone at this table. One doesn't drink champagne by oneself. I have a beautiful and exceedingly talented lady with me. She has just gone to uh, powder her nose. Ah, here she is. Ah, Matahari, the Hindu dancer. She is with you. Javanese. Gentlemen. May I present Madame Colonel Walter Nicolai, Colonel D. Matahari. An honor. Or may I uh, join you for a moment? Certainly. Please, everyone sit. And which is my class? This one? I drink to you both. The Colonel is in charge of all German intelligence. A must spy. Oh, how I envy you. Especially now that we are at war. <laughs> now, what do you think of that, Hans? This beautiful woman is more abreast of military matters than you. <laughs> Herr von Hagel didn't hear the Kaiser's declaration. I've always loved a man in uniform. <laughs> he has fascinated me since I was a little girl. I did not know that. It was your uniform, Hans, that first struck me. My husband dressed as so was the most handsome British officer who met me in southern India and carried me away. I was 17, swept off my feet. You were born in India, madame? In the south, on the coast of Malabar, in the holy city of Javna Patam, of the sacred caste of Brahma. My father was called Asavadam. My mother, a famous temple dancer in the temple of Kandaswani. She died when I was born, and I was adopted by the temple priest. They named me Mother Hari, which you may know means Eye of the Morning. And then in my extreme youth, I was trained in the holy rites of the dance in the Temple of Siva. Wonderful. Fascinating. Every gesture of the dance has a spiritual meaning. Oh, madam, may I have this waltz? Certainly. Uh, you'll excuse us, Hans. 
I have no choice. Please, go on, madam, with your story. You really wish to know? Well, I wish to hear you tell it. At the age of 13, I was initiated into the mystery of faith and love. And on the night of Sakti Puja, I danced for the first time alone, before the altar, completely nude. If I were not holding you in my arms as we waltz, I would certainly applaud. <laughs> A remarkable fairy tale. What do you mean, fairy tale? Matahari, 29 years ago, you were born in Holland, in the town of Leeward. Your real name is Margaret Gertrude Zeller. Your father, Adam Zeller, had a hat shop. When you were 14, your mother died. Your father moved to Amsterdam, and you went to The Hague to live with your uncle. <laughs> and that's where this British officer who carried you away. Are you going to tell me I was not married? You were married at 18, to a man 20 years older than you, serving in the Dutch colonial forces in the Indies. You went with him to Java, hated that life, left him, learned some dancing, and here you are. The toast of Paris, London, and Berlin. How do you know all this? <laughs> it is my job. I throw myself upon your mercy. You don't have to do that. I can see by what you're wearing you are handsomely rewarded. This old rags were practically fallen off my back. Somebody had to pay for them. Whatever money I've spent, I've earned, Colonel. I have no doubt of it. But you are always reimbursed. For what? For what you're doing now. For dancing? Yes. And for being friendly. I'm always friendly. Especially to men in uniform. There's no money in that. Let me select a gentleman for you to be friendly with. It could be an interesting occupation. What makes you think it would interest me? Mata Hari, I offer you reality. You offer me fiction. Think twice before turning down my offer. For what reason, dear Colonel? Why should you accept my proposal? I would say a beautiful woman whose hotel bill has not been paid in a month, who owes the tailor, the shoemaker, the milliner, whose dresser has not received a fennec in six months. Uh, shall I go on? I don't wish to discuss this woman about whom you appear to know so much. Why would I, Mother Hari, accept a position, interesting occupation, you call it, with the German intelligence? What do you offer me? To be a spy. You did say what I thought you said. I did indeed. Madame, in my opinion, you could be the ideal person to spy for the Kaiser. You speak French, you speak English, German. You know your way about the continent. Paris, London. You are accepted everywhere as an artist. I would like to accept you as a spy. But I know nothing about it. We will teach you. How much money is there in this work? Mm -hmm. Hundreds of thousands. When do I start? Although she denied it to her dying day, Mata Hari then and there agreed to spy for the Germans. As she had done in the past, she would continue to entertain her old friends of the French military, and whatever she could learn, pass along to German intelligence. It was all a game to her, part of the role of the international entertainer. Besides, the dangers were slight, just enough to lend spice to the adventure. After all, so many loved her. Was there anyone in all Europe who would harm her? I shall return shortly with Act Two. In the White House at the end of Seminary Road in Antwerp, in the heart of unsuspecting neutral Holland, the Germans ran a model spy academy. Here, Matahari went to train with other recruits. All wore masks. No one was identified by name. Weeks, months of learning cryptography, sabotage, camouflage, etc. At the end of six months, Matahari was ordered to Paris, there to await instructions. She was now known as H-21. To turn up like this all of a sudden, Matahari, what a shock you gave me. Is this your room? Gabriel, I must have work. My darling child, there is no work in Paris. Half the people are hungry and all the other half thinks about is war. You don't understand. What do I care about a little war? Everything I own is falling apart. 
I simply cannot appear on any stage in these old rags. Gabriel, you must find me 30,000 francs. Why don't you ask me for a million? It is not possible, that's why. Where have you been for the past six months when I could have booked you in St. Petersburg? I'm just as glad. You know, I can't stand the cold. If you cannot arrange for theaters to book me, why not private parties? Well, that perhaps I can arrange. I must dance, Gabrielle, don't you understand? I'm getting rusty. One must dance all the time. I've been too long away from my soul. I'll go anywhere, Spain, Italy, Africa... Wherever there is hot sun. No one has the freedom to travel they had before the war. I could get you an engagement in Palermo and perhaps, perhaps London. But you must secure the necessary papers. Why didn't you say so? Who do I see? The chief of the military bureau for foreigners. Where is this man? On the Boulevard Saint-Germain, number 282. In that same building, you know, is the French Bureau of Counter-Espionage. What difference does that make to me? I wish travel permits for England and Italy, nothing else. Yeah, but once you are in that building, no one can protect you. For what? You think I should be interrogated by the Counter Espionage Bureau? What if they do? I have nothing to tell them. I'm no spy. Well, I am not saying that you are. Who am I spying for? My dear Mata Hari, when you disappeared in Antwerp for five months, six, do you think nobody cared? My child, look, you can trust me. The day you left the White House at the end of Seminary Road, I was across the street. You have a vivid imagination. No, 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 no. I know what goes on there in that White House. Now do you understand why I am afraid to let you go for a travel pass to the French Military Bureau? <laughs> I might have known you would sniff it out. Now, what is that address on the Boulevard Saint-Germain? 282. Mata Hari, you will be followed. There are men from the Deuxième Bureau in the lobby of this hotel. I have always been followed. That's not a new experience. Come, Gabriel, cheer up. I'll go right now, and I will get that travel permit you will see. Where to first, Palermo? As you wish. Commandant Ledoux, Madame Matahari is in the building. She's been detained at the control section. What is she doing here? She came for a travel permit. Here's a cable concerning her from uh, Basil Thompson, London, just arrived. Concerning the lady? Yes, monsieur. Oh, well, place it in her file and leave the file with me. Is she outside? Yes, monsieur. For her sent in. The commandant will see you now. Monsieur, I was in the building to secure a travel pass to Italy, where I have an engagement at Palermo, and I was told Commandant Ladoux wished to see me. A formality, Madame Matahari, a slight formality. Please sit down. You know me? Is there anyone in Paris who does not? So? What do you want of me? First of all, I shall be happy to grant you the necessary travel documents to Italy. In that case, Commandant, do me the favor and tell those plain clothesmen downstairs who stick to me like my own shadow that since it's a very warm day, you give them permission to drink to my health in the bistro across the street. You have been followed. Are you sure? My dear man, I am always sure. It is not possible that Ladoux, the chief of the Deuxième Bureau, does not know I am being followed. Why is this? We have received cables from the British that you are an employer of German espionage. Why do the British talk such nonsense? You are not a German spy. I am a dancer, Commandant. This idiotic game has to end. If you consider me dangerous, then expel me from France. If I am only a nice little dancer who wishes to seek employment in Palermo, let me have my travel pass and let me go. Here is your passport. The permit is in order. You are still a Dutch citizen, no? Proud to be and neutral. Stay neutral. You will live longer. I would like to see you again, madame, when you return from Palermo. My pleasure. My dear artist, you are being evasive, Matahari. Yes, Gabriel. What happened at Palermo? Nothing happened. 
I made the one appearance the contract called for. You know very well they had the option to keep you for an entire week, but you disappeared. I was tired. How did I know they wished me for another six days? But where were you? Oh, you're an impossible woman. I don't know why I continue to manage you. I was here, in France. And you sent me not one word. The, the, the sleepless nights I've spent worrying about you. Gabriel, I shall be honest. I have fallen in love. <laughs> I'm not surprised. You have wished to be in love for a long time. Who is he? His name is Captain Vadim Maslov. He's Russian. He has fought for France and is now convalescing from his wounds in detail. I was there. I'm glad to hear it. Are you going to marry? If only I could. I'll tell you this. He's the only love of my entire life. Does he love you, my child? Yes. Well, then why not marry? I am 40 and he's 25. He comes from a noble family, and what am I? A dancer of Javanese temple rites. A dancer. Also the toast of many cities. That doesn't matter to his family. There is only one way I might impress them, and that is by having money. Would the uh, Germans maybe give you an advance? I have yet to receive an assignment. All that time wasted in Antwerp. Six months. Why did I say I'd work for them? I was stupid. Only the French know what information is worth. The commandant. The commandant. Why didn't I think of this before? I have spent the entire morning trying to find you, Monsieur Ladoux. They moved the deuxième bureau to a building of our own here on the Rue Jacob. What do you wish? You wanted to see me when I returned to Paris. Only to make certain you are in good health. But I can see you are in extraordinary health. Does it show? Decidedly. It is love, eh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why sense words with you of the French Secret Service? Yes, it is love. When is the bright day? He won't marry me. He can't. He comes from a noble family. Oh, too bad. If I had a great deal of money, then, perhaps. How much do you need? A million. And what can you do that is worth a million? Something for you, perhaps. Before the war, I was very friendly with the German crown prince. If I became friendly again, and uh, let us say, during our friendship, I listened while he talked about German war plans and gave you that information, Monsieur Ledoux, would you give me a million? If you were an exceedingly good friend of the Crown Prince, he should give you the million. You don't believe me. I've only to wave this little finger, so the Germans adore me, always have. They treat me like royalty. Madame. Do you really wish to enter our secret service? It is dangerous work. I never doubted it. Let me tell you something. I am absolutely certain that you are spying for the Germans. Huh? Let me finish, I beg you. What I cannot understand is why you have just made me a proposal which will make it necessary for you either to betray the Germans or ourselves. You are an infant in this business. Let me warn you. If there are any hazards worse than being a spy, it is being a double agent. You don't know women, monsieur. The worst hazard in the world is to be a woman in love. Truly in love for the first time. And to be afraid it could slip through your fingers. It is for that I am gambling. Madame, betray us. And it is the firing squad. Will you stop scolding me and warning me? Am I in your employ? Yes. Is it worth a million? It is up to you to prove that. My first assignment is what? You will go to Holland, but not directly. I have booked your passage via Spain. This is your itinerary. You were very sure of me, weren't you? We knew about Captain Vadimoslov and yourself at Vittel. After all, a Frenchman does know something about love. Your first stop, Irun. From there, you will take the Midnight Express to Madrid, and from there to Vigo. Then, embarking on the SS Hollandia bound for Rotterdam. Everything is said down here. Memorize it and destroy it. One favor. It looks better on the train if a woman is not traveling alone. Can I ask my manager to accompany me as far as Madrid? If he pays his own way, why not? Outside, my assistant has a packet of money for you. Not a million, but enough to take care of you to Rotterdam. 
The train connection to Iran for Madrid leaves tonight. Give Gabriel my regards. You know Gabriel, my manager? We were in school together. He went into the theater. I went into the police. Bon voyage. Gabriel, I'd like to get out of the compartment and stretch my legs. Let us walk up and down the corridor. Oh, I agree. Four hours in one place puts my spine to sleep. I'll slide back to the door. Gabriel, you never told me you knew Ladu. Oh, I'd forgotten all about him until you mentioned it. That man in a compartment sitting in the corner. He's watching us, isn't he? He was. He can't see us now. Did you notice his mustache? How could one help it? It's enormous. There's something peculiar about it. Yeah, I agree with you. When do we get to Madrid? Another hour about. The train is slowing down. Are we stopping here? Let's move to the ends of the car. The windows open so I can look out. There's a car on the road below the tracks. It is stopping also. Look! It's a man with a big mustache. He's running down the embankment and getting into the car. Oh, I have a nasty feeling. Let's get back to our seats. My suitcase has been opened. And so has mine. That gives me a lot of satisfaction. Oh, it does, huh? First of all, I instinctively knew she was following us, which means my intuition is working well. Secondly, there isn't a scrap of anything in my case that would reveal I was anything but a Javanese dancer. Have I met all of you? Gabriel, may I introduce you to Mata Hari herself? Mata Hari, spy for the Germans. And Mata Hari, a spy for the French. <laughs> and if it is the only way to make the money I need, I would offer my services to the Italians, the British, and the hot tots. Mata Hari, an adventurous by nature, was discovering that being a spy was far more exciting than being a dancer, especially in Spain, where she was headed for. In those days... Madrid was a hive of international intrigue. Spies from all countries on its streets and in its cafes. But who is it shadowing Matahari? We'd also like to know. I shall return shortly with some information on that and all of Act Three. about way Mata Hari was instructed to get to Rotterdam from Paris was typical of the doubling back on one's tracks used by espionage agents. As she made her way out of the Madrid railroad station, Mata Hari was suddenly seized and pushed into a car. The car took off, leaving Gabrielle, her manager, standing at the curb. What do you think you're doing? Let me out of here. For three hours, you silenced the compartment opposite me and did not recognize me. Hunt. Hans von Jakob. It's the mustache, and you dyed your hair black. I told Gabriel there was something wrong with your mustache. Why are you in Madrid? Why are you not in Paris? We ordered you to Paris. I waited for word from you, nothing. So you followed me and searched my luggage. I hope you're satisfied. I hope Walter Nikolai will be satisfied. If he wishes my services, he should give me orders and money. These are your orders. Tomorrow, the night train back to Paris. Age 21, we regard you as a full-time employee of the Kaiser. And so that you do not mistake that. Driver, would you be good enough to turn your face around, please? A pleasure. And uh, Nikolaya. Everything has been made clear to you, Age 21. Tomorrow night, you leave for Paris. What do I do when I get there? As you were told, go to the Dutch legation. Your contact will have money in your assignment. I shall stop the car now and let you off. Ah, the woman's a fool, Vanyago. We had no business turning her in the first place. A waste of time. I feel sorry for her. People like that get in the way. 
She made a deal with the Zem Bureau to spy for them as well. What for? To her, this is a game. I see hundreds, thousands of men risking their lives for the Kaiser. What is this Matahari good for? Don't tell me I know. She is to be shot right away. Those are the orders I have given. Outside the Dutch legation, in Paris. after you tell me that the Germans have ordered you back to Paris tonight. The Hollandia will have sailed by then, and I am on it bound for Rotterdam. What can they do? You're not frightened of them, are you? They were sending me to Paris, not to spy, but to be killed. I know it. Now will you go ashore while there is still time? Oh, but how can I leave you? I wouldn't have a moment's peace until I knew that you'd arrived safely in Holland. It's one straight line from Spain to Rotterdam. What can go wrong? You have a facility, my dear, to make the worst happen. There's only one stop before Rotterdam, and that is Falmouth. Falmouth, England. I never had any trouble with the British. They adore me in London. But I am taking the entire trip back with you. I am going below now to speak to the purser, pay for my passage, and I expect to find you right here on deck when I return. England is beautiful from the water. Well, it's much quieter than the channel, the way we usually go. So this is Falmouth. I don't like that. What is it, Gabriel? There's a cutter just pulled alongside. Perhaps they're putting on mail for Rotterdam. Will everyone remain on the boat deck, please? British authorities are checking all passports. Thank you. You hear that? What difference to me? My passport's valid. I'm a Dutch citizen going home. Madam, may I see your passport, please? Certainly. You are a Miss or Mrs. Matahari, Dutch citizen? I am. You will come with me. Why? I'm going on to Rotterdam. We have reason to believe this passport is false. Please, be seated. I demand to know the meaning of this outrage. I am a Dutch citizen on my way from Spain to Rotterdam. I was forced off my ship at Falmouth and brought to London. Where am I? This is Scotland Yard, madam. Can you explain why you are traveling to Rotterdam? I am a Dutch citizen. I wish to go home. Who directed you to go to Rotterdam? No one. No one. No one. Is that clear? Well, I hear you clearly enough, but I don't believe you. In Berlin and elsewhere in Germany, you have been seen in the company of the highest military officers. No matter what country I'm in, I will only spend time with the top rank. Do you see me having a cup of tea with one of the small fry in your passport control section? Hardly. But I might have tea with you, Sir Basil. Well, I should be honored. You are a gentleman. You regard me as an enemy spy. Yet your manners don't falter. As for spying, yes, I admit it. I admit it to you, Sir Basil, personally. I admit it. I have come to England to spy. Really? But not for the Germans, as you may think. I am in the employ of your ally, France. Really? Get me Le Doux, Dijon Bureau, Paris. If this is true, Madame Matahari, a, a thousand apologies. How can you treat a citizen of a neutral country like this? Because it appears you're engaging in unneutral acts. It appears. It is rumored. Our information tells us. Anyone can lie to you and you believe them. Hello, hello. Ledoux? Oui? Uh, Basil Thompson, British Intelligence. We have Matahari here. Oh. Uh, Matahari, of whom we have sent you several reports. Oh, uui, oui, yes. She, she tells me she is employed by your bureau as an agent. That she came from Spain and is on her way to Rotterdam. I did not understand anything. Send her back to Spain. You neither affirm 
Oh, deny she is your agent. Send her back to Spain. Do you hear me? And <clears throat> he said we should send you back to Spain. I don't understand that man at all. You must know that if anything goes wrong, the intelligent agent is on his own. No one rescues him or her. We have warned Ledoux you are a German agent. If he has engaged you, he will not verify it. Uh, why does a woman like you get into this? It is very dangerous. For love. For stupid love. I wish to marry. And the man I love is recuperating from war wounds in a French hospital. I took Ledoux into my confidence. He said he would pay me well. But I have yet to reveal one secret to him. Well, I shall release you, but I advise you. I know this business. Do not set foot in France again. You will be caught and executed. Why would they? Oh, my dear, you're an amateur in these matters and not very clever. If indeed you are a double agent or think you are, you have botched it completely. Now take the advice of a man almost twice your age. Give up this awful profession before it's too late. George, a favor, I beg you. Gabriel, I know what you are going to ask me. It is about the dancer you manage, Matahari. The eye of the morning. Yes, yes, it is. I warned her, George, before she came back to France. She was warned at Scotland Yard. Everyone said, leave the spying alone and just dance. But she wouldn't. Where is she? At Saint-Lazare Prison. May I see her? Hey, Gabriel, it will take some time to arrange. There will be a trial? Oh, yes. Soon? No. Several weeks, perhaps months from now? I must see her and assure her that she will be freed. That it's all a mistake. She will not be freed, mon ami. You mean she may be shot? Very likely. Spies are always shot. She played double agent and got caught. She didn't know what she was doing. All her life she lived in a dreamland. And then suddenly it became real. Gabriel, I will see what I can do for you. Matahari. Do you know me? Who are you? Gabriel. It's so dark in here. Why have you been so long, Gabriel? I didn't think you would desert me like all the others. My child, the day they brought you here, I spoke to everyone I know in Paris for permission to see you. They have kept me waiting all these weeks. I go out of the cell sometimes. There is a military captain who questions me. No one believes me. What do they say? Here is a beautiful woman. They say, Gabrielle, it's a good thing you can't see me. My beauty is gone. Gone. And I'm fat. My skin broken out. I was always, always so careful of my skin. They don't let me wash. Here's a beautiful woman, they say. She speaks five languages. She has friends in every capital in Europe. Where are those friends, Gabriel? Did you see any friends of mine out there? I am trying to get several influential people together to speak of your good character so you will have help when the trial comes. No one will speak for me. Will you deliver a note? Captain Boucheron, he can get me news. I must write a nice note, not hysterical. Have you pencil and paper? Yeah, yeah I, I brought some. I will sit on the ground by the door so I can see. Go ahead. I would be grateful if you would give me some news of Captain Maslov. I am worried and weeping such a great deal. Please search for him in the hospital at Epernay. You do not know how I suffer. I can't bear it anymore. Gabriel, 
You will take that message. I promise, little one, I will deliver it myself. We were hoping so much to have a life together. I understand you visited Matahari, Gabrielle. Tell me, is she worried what will happen to her? No, never mentioned it. She only lives for a word from her beloved Vadim Maslov. You have seen him? Oh, yes. I went to the hospital with Captain Boucheron, who's conducting the investigation. This Maslov, he doesn't deserve her love. I, I read him the letter she had me write. The captain asked him, was it true? Had he loved Matahari? And he said, he said never. They will find her guilty of treason. George, you, I, everyone else are as much to blame for all her wiles, her abilities, her little victories, even her pretense of taking the Javanese name for the Eye of the Morning. She, she was an innocent, a child. And like the little match girl, she has learned too late not to play with fire. Early in the morning of October 15th, 1917, Matahari was taken outside of Paris to face a firing squad. They offered her a blindfold. She refused to mask those eyes of hers that had hypnotized thousands. Twelve shots rang out. At 6.15 a.m., Matahari, the eye of the morning, was dead. I shall return shortly. at the story now, it is evident that espionage as a trade can only be successfully carried out by those who are impersonal. It is not a game to play at. The price outweighs the rewards. Chance and luck are not partners, for in such a duel with fate, even a beautiful woman can be overwhelmed by misfortune. That was the tragedy of Matahari. Our cast included Tammy Grimes, Arnold Moss, Lloyd Batista, and Mandel Kramer. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.